Hi everyone! In this video, we'll try to find the answer to the question What are the entry and exit criteria? Let's begin. And we'll begin with an explanation given by ISTQP. The link to the ISTQP website will be provided in the materials for the video. According to the ISTQB, entry criteria are the set of conditions for officially starting a defined task. And the exit criteria are the set of conditions for officially completing a defined task. And that's all. As you can see, the definitions are very vague. That's why they can be applied to any activity. The most popular example is the STLC stages. And we are going to talk about it in a couple of minutes. A less popular example is test levels. Each level of integration, system and acceptance testing has its own entry and exit criteria. Almost never mentioned, but equally important are the types of testing. Non-functional types of testing have their own entry and exit criteria. The same applies to regression testing. And the last but not least, the project level of entry and exit criteria. They can be either at the level of one important or large feature or at the level of iteration or even at the level of the entire project. As we said before, the most popular example is the entry and exit criteria for each test activity in the STLC. Therefore, we'll try to give our own examples for all the activities mentioned in the organization. From test planning to test completion. Let's start with the test planning. To start the test planning activity, the test expert needs requirements. These can be user stories, software requirements, specifications, or even ISO standards. What resources are allocated for testing and much other important information? When this information is available, the test expert writes a document called a test plan. In that document, the test expert needs to answer a lot of questions. What is the scope and what's out of scope for this testing effort? What constraints affect testing? But what is important for us within the scope of this video, the test expert must determine the entry and exit criteria for each of the stages of the testing process. The written test plan is the exit criteria for test planning activities. Some may disagree with the statement because the test plan is a product and not an exit criteria. In our opinion, the creation of the finished product is the main exit criteria for each stage of the test process. And the next stage is test analysis. The entry criteria for test analysis are also the presence of requirements, the test basis. But if for test planning it was not necessary to have very detailed requirements, then in the test analysis it is necessary to have final requirements, diagrams and schemes based on which the product will be developed. Another important entry criteria is the presence of test plan. After all, this means that the test planning activity has already been completed and the test analysis can begin. Also, the test plan defines entry and exit criteria for all stages of the test process. The exit criteria for test analysis activity are test conditions and the traceability matrix between the test conditions and test bases. At the end of this phase is a detailed list of what to test. As soon as test conditions are determined, you can move on to the next phase of testing, test design. The entry criteria for the test design activity are the availability of test conditions defined in the test analysis activity. Testers write test cases that cover test conditions. As a result, the exit criteria of test design are test cases and the traceability matrix between test cases and test conditions. Thanks to two traceability matrices, testers are sure that all requirements are covered by the tests. Now that the tests are written, it's time to move on to the next phase. Test implementation. Test implementation is an activity that involves preparing everything needed to start testing. The entry criteria for it are test cases. They are grouped into test suits and test procedures are created that determine the sequence of running test suits. The test environment will also be set up, which is the main entry criteria for starting the next phase of the test process. Test execution. 
To start the test execution activity, you need the test environment and the test suits, procedures and schedule. And once the test execution cycles are finished, there are two main test execution products available. Defect reports and test execution reports. Testers inform the stakeholders about how many test cases are passed and failed, how many defects are found, and the severity of those defects. Depending on the decision taken by the stakeholders, the test process may repeat some activities. At least the developers will fix the bugs and testers will run the tests once more. Or, if the stakeholders decide that they are satisfied with the quality of the product, the test process will move to the final stage – test completion or test closure activities. The test completion activity uses the work products from all previous test process phases. The tester evaluates whether what was planned in the test plan corresponds to what was done. For that, it uses the metrics that were determined during the test planning activity. As a result, test summary reports are formed. Depending on the project, the defect leakage, defect density, code coverage and requirement coverage are calculated. This is what the entry and exit criteria for each stage of the test process looks like. They are not universal and may vary depending on what is being tested and how it is being tested. We want to emphasize one more time that definitions are very vague. That's why they can be applied to any activity. The STLC stages, test levels and test types. The entry and exit criteria of testing are context-dependent. And they can change according to where and under what conditions they are used. And that's our answer to the question. What are the entry and exit criteria?